Sorry about that. Oh, just one of those days. It's all right. I'm not in any rush. Um, have we met before? No. You've maybe been up on holiday or something, have you? I just can't get your name. No, no. This is my first visit to Glendarroch. I'm Florence Crossan. How do you do? Uh, Isabel Blair. I'm Mary Mack's sister. I've come to keep house for the minister. Miss Crossan, uh, of course. Uh, yes, there is a slight resemblance. <laughs> Just I was expecting somebody much, much older oh, <laughs> than Mrs. Mack, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I'm the baby of the family. Oh. Now, tell me, Mrs. Blair, are you self-service or can I just come straight to the counter? Oh, well, we bit of both here, Miss Crossan, but I'll be delighted to serve you. Oh, good. I'm so tired of those supermarkets. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think I could quote you the man's weekly order by heart. Oh, well, I need a few extras this week, mm -hmm. Mrs. Blair. Um, sugar, for a start. Now, can I have four bags of sugar? Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. And most important... Do you have any really nice chocolate biscuits? Chocolate? Yes, look, just there. Oh, oh, that's fine. I get the impression that Mary and the minister have one or two bees in their bonnets about dieting. Well, yes, I think Mrs. Mack does like to stick to a strict regime. I think she's hoping to cure the minister's sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. But the food's all so dreadfully thin. I'm sure a little bit of what he fancies will do nothing but good. Oh, which reminds me, are you licensed? Oh, yes, fully licensed. Oh, that's good. The man's is very low on sherry. Um, better have a bottle of medium dry. One never knows when visitors might drop in. Drop in? At the man's? Mm hmm That nice Mr. Murder, for instance. He's quite good friends of Mary's. Take it. Uh, yes, they uh, certainly do see eye to eye on most things. Mm -hmm. Now, will I just put all these on the account, Miss Crowson? Well, that'll be fine. Inseparable, the minister said they were. I suppose that means they're going steady. Oh, good gracious. No, there's nothing like that, Miss Crowson. Oh, dear. Poor Mary has a very forbidding nature. It does tend sometimes to keep people at arm's length. I know what you mean. Well, oh, hello. good afternoon, ladies. Hello, Mr. Versailles. How nice to have the pleasure of seeing you again so soon, Florence. Oh, Robert. I uh, thought I might drop round later, uh, if you're not too busy this afternoon. Oh, that would be lovely. Oh. Only if you've got time, mind. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Blair. Bye-bye. How kind of you. A charming lady, don't you think so, Isabel? I do. And shame on you, Mr. Forsyth, for spreading all those dreadful rumours about her. Even worse than Mrs. Mack, you said. Oh, oh, oh. cross lines, Isabel. I should have known better than to believe Mrs. Mack. I suppose uh, Florence was asking you all about the village? Uh, no, no, not really. She did uh, ask me a few questions about a certain villager, though. Mm hmm And who might that be? Very nice, she said he was. No accounting for taste, of course. Uh, who was this, Isabel? Obadiah Murdoch. I don't know how much more we're likely to need, Morag. Just do to make a mess of it. Eh, yeah, away you go. What's she on about, anyway? Your mother's trying to find out how many kids you've invited, Dougal. Well, how do I know? I just told Donald to ask whoever he liked. You did what? Well, that's what parties are all about, isn't it? It's a birthday party, Dougal, not a school treat. I can't perform miracles at the last minute, not in that oven. Well, it's not my fault you've hardly any time. It was you that changed your mind again at the last minute. I changed my mind because of Alice. <sighs> oh, and you owe Bob and Alice an apology, my lad. Dare we? What have I got to apologise for? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's only grown men that know how to apologise, and you've not grown up yet. <laughs> and probably never will. Oh, aye. Open season on Dougal again, is it? Ah, oh, well, carry on the lot of you. Even Tab seems hell-bent on making a mug of me. <laughs> he was showing off Tab to Brian and that London woman when the beast took off away up the hill didn't come back for nearly an hour. What was it Dougal always used to say about shepherds that don't know how to train their dogs properly? Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Dougal. There are not many farmers around here who'll be reading woman's life. Well, I do. Brian Blair must be off his head, traipsing on city women all over the hills like that. Lily Taylor was bad enough. But she's a good soul at heart. She would never laugh like that at Tav. It was you that were laughing at, Dougal, not Tav. And it sounds as though Tav was having a good laugh at you, too. Too. <laughs> 
I'd offer you some coffee, but my housekeeper makes it much better than I do. She'll be back quite soon. She's just run out for one or two messages. Messages? Uh, shopping. We don't go shopping here in Scotland. We get the messages, as it were. Yes, and you get each other down the road, too, don't you? <laughs> You've been studying the lingo. <laughs> Mr. McPherson, probably I shouldn't ask you this, really, but the housekeeper in Lily's book... Is she anything like your real housekeeper? Uh, many people here would agree with the description. So what was her reaction when she read the book? I mean, I suppose she has read it. Oh, Mrs. Taylor very kindly sent me a presentation copy, which my housekeeper borrowed, and in fact she managed to read it before I did. And recognised herself? It would have been difficult not to. Oh, wasn't she absolutely livid? Not in the least. Oh, so she can take a joke in real life, anyway. Oh, no, Mrs. Mack has no sense of humour whatever. But uh, she thought her fictional counterpart was wholly admirable. The real heroine of the novel, oh. she thought. <laughs> <laughs> what marvellous irony. I can't wait to meet her. I think of all Lily's characters, she's my favourite. Yeah. Time to keep you waiting for your coffee. Oh, you've got a visitor. <laughs> this is my housekeeper. Uh, th this is Miss Kay, a journalist from London. Oh. Oh, don't think I've ever met a journalist before, but this manse is such a friendly place. It's always full of visitors. What a good job we bought that sherry. <laughs> I expect we could all do with a glass during lunchtime. <laughs> you uh, haven't seen much of your friend from the magazine since she arrived. No, I haven't, which is just as well, don't you think? Is it? Well, I know it's rather selfish of me, but I prefer to visit old friends on my own without having a Sassanac to look after. <laughs> Well, I don't think you need to worry about looking after Frances. It appears she's already being looked after rather well. By a man, you mean? Oh, good. I am glad. She'll enjoy her stay here so much more. Oh, I'm sure she will, Lily. But there might be someone else who won't. You mean... It's a married man, my dear. Brian Blair. Oh. Well, I'm relieved to hear it's Brian. Frances will be in very capable hands. And the Blairs have such a perfect marriage. Nobody would dream of gossiping about them. Oh, one or two have started to gossip already. Well, really. The Blairs have been going through a, a very rocky patch well, since Jimmy left. Oh, that's dreadful, Alice. And they're such a nice couple, too. Yeah. Fought like cat and dog when I was working down in the shop. It was terrible, Lily. And now Frances has arrived. She's a very attractive woman, isn't she? I suppose you'll be quite used to all this scenery. Uh, used to it. Doesn't mean to say I take it for granted, though. Neither does your Mr. Campbell, even if he is blind. He practically ordered me to leave my car in Glasgow, even at the time of the trains. Best way to see the scenery, he says. I haven't had so much fresh air in years. I'm surprised you bother to come at all. I mean, that's just the contents of one wee cottage. Well, I don't just go for quantity. I do look for quality, too. Uh, I don't know about quality myself. But one of the locals called it a load of old junk. <laughs> the old boy said there were some old sporting trophies. You never know how far the collectors will go when the bidding starts. You reckon the trophies might fetch quite a bit, then? They might. Like what? <laughs> I'm not a fortune teller, lad. I'm only the auctioneer. Donald's party. Uh, well, you tell me how many's coming and I'll try and work out how much you'll need. Well, I don't know how many's coming. I, I told Donald just to ask whoever he liked. Oh, help you. Maybe end up with every child in the district. Should we say, what, 12? That's half the school. Oh, that's fine as well. Whatever you say. Right. Uh, sweeties, wasn't it now? What do you fancy? Oh, I'll take that jar there. What, the whole jar? Aye. Uh, those are the ones with sherbet in the middle, aren't they? That's what they tell me. Ah, grand. <laughs> right. Oh, oh. Uh, crisps, or maybe better say 20 packets of crisps. Uh, and lemonade, um, eight, ten bottles being the safe uh, side. Uh, now, I'll need to find you a couple of carriers, do mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Mr. Carradine came into the shop yesterday. Uh, aye, he, he was up at the Croft as well, uh, asking what Craig had said about the poachers. Uh, he was asking the same questions here. If the two that Craig mentioned are the two that Bob and I tangled with, well, things might be looking up, according to Caradine, anyway. Oh, I hope so, Dougal. Be a great relief when this is all over. Aye. I keep trying to put it to the back of my mind. It's not so bad when I'm up in the hill or even about the steading that once I'm indoors, I 
I can't seem to think about anything else. I know how you feel. Aye. It's maybe a terrible thing to be saying to you, Isabel, but, uh, well, I never realised before, uh, not really, what it must have been like for Brian all these years, locked up like that. Isabel says uh, lunch in five minutes. All right. You enjoyed your walk? Oh, yes, thanks, sir. I went down to explore that derelict mill that Isabel mentioned. Mm. We used to think it was haunted when we were kids. I'm not surprised. Certainly got atmosphere. Where are you and Isabel headed for this evening? Oh, I've given up the evening walks, Brian. Oh, quite right. You don't want to overdo things when you're convalescing. Well, actually, I, I thought you and Isabel probably needed the evening to yourselves, with you being away so much of the day. Oh, really? What on earth made you think that? Look, Brian, I'd never have asked you to put me up if I'd thought that you were going through a bad spell. Well, that's one of the reasons I offered you board. Isabel needs somebody to fuss over, and I am fed up with being fussed and nagged. You think she treats you like a child? Well, isn't it obvious? Yeah. Maybe you treat her a bit like a child, too, sometimes. I think you're both overprotective because you both care so much. Uh-huh. Well, how did you become such an expert on marriage? Oh, experts always lack practice. Though I might just... Get round to asking somebody in the not-too-distant future? Well, take my advice. Don't. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Mrs. Ma uh, Mary and I are boon companions. <laughs> so everybody tells me. Mary is a, a fine, upstanding woman. An example to us all, and uh, full of good works. Many's the time she and I have stood firm against the, the laxity so deplorably evident in this village. I can see why you and Mary are such good friends. And I, Florence, can see that you are one of the very few able to take Mrs. Ma Mary's place when she's away. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your sister's fine qualities run in the family. No, it doesn't seem like work at all. I'm enjoying myself so much. The minister's a very considerate man to work for, and the parishioners are also friendly, you know. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I think it's my duty to warn you, however, that... Uh, not everyone in the village is to be trusted. Goodness me. Are you referring to anybody in particular? Stay. Well, I wouldn't like to be responsible for blackening anyone's character. Oh, no, no, of course. I quite understand. So we just say that a certain horse doctor whom you recently met has got quite a reputation as a ladies' man. Robert! A widower, you know. Oh, excuse me. So sorry about that. Someone to see the minister, no doubt? No. As a matter of fact, it was Robert Forsyth. But I just told him he was rather busy this afternoon. Just what have you been up to, Inverdara? We've been hearing terrible stories about you. Oh, aye. More sticks and stones, is it? No. No, it was something Lily told us over dinner. That's all right, then. Lily wouldn't tell a lie. <laughs> you haven't heard what she told us yet. She said you're thinking of getting married. So? What if I am? You mean you are? If you're something against marriage, then, Bob, being married yourself. No, no. I'm just a bit surprised. I... Didn't realise you were that fond of the lady. Why wouldn't I be? You've always been quite fond of her yourself, haven't you? Me? Oh, I sure. I mean, she's she's quite a nice person. It's a great deal more than that, Bob. 
or else I wouldn't be thinking of marrying her. I was only teasing you, Mr. Forsyth. Uh, but you were right, Isabel. She really has taken a shine to murder. Oh, now, whatever makes you think that? Well, I just took a notion to look in on her again. Well, it can be very lonely up there in that big house. Oh, yes, marooned out there on the edge of the village. Mm -hmm. But it turned out she wasn't lonely at all. She told me she was very busy and bade me good day. What, never even asked you in? No, because Murdoch was there already. I saw him through the window as I came down the path, sitting in the minister's chair, if you please. <laughs> Maybe he was waiting to see Mr. McPherson. Then why should Florence say she was so busy? Oh, I know I, I'm not as handsome as I once was, Isabel, but I can still knock spots off Obadiah. Oh, yes, there are one or two ladies who could vouch for my charms. Oh, I'm sure there are, Mr. Forsyth. You don't see any charm in Murdoch, do you, Isabel? <laughs> no, of course not. And I don't see how Miss Crossan can either. I mean, she's not the least bit like her sister. You've only to see her shopping list to understand that. Huh? Sugar, chocolate, cream, sherry. Oh, a woman after my own heart. But alas, it's not my heart she's after. Now, you're being very defeatist about this. Have you had a chance to meet her yet without your rival being present? <laughs> chance would be a fine thing. Ah, but you'll have to make your own chances. Get her away from Murdoch and the manse. Ask her out to dinner. To the Octar. Where else? You're right, Isabel. The old skinflint would never make her an offer like that. Well, Lily, you were absolutely right. Everyone's been most helpful and most hospitable. <sighs> well, naturally. They're famous for it, my dear. Coed Mila Felsha. A hundred thousand welcomes. Oh, well, nobody's actually said that to me yet. Perhaps the Lady Laird will, or one of her faithful retainers. They're the only ones I've yet to meet. Oh, that's splendid, Francis. You have worked fast. You should be back in London in no time at all. Oh, you sound awfully relieved at the prospect, Lily. Well, I do worry. Just a little, my dear. In case something goes wrong. Wrong? What do you mean? Well, people here open their hearts to me so... so readily. Because I was Matthew's widow, I suppose. And, of course, I was on their wavelength. Forgive me, my dear, but um, I worry in case you are not. You see, their world is so different from the uh, the fast lane that you live in. Oh, I don't think I've trodden anyone's toes so far. Not even Mrs. Blair's. Although she certainly seems to think I have. She positively bridles every time I come into the shop. Thinks I'm setting my cap at her husband, I suppose. Oh, but of course that's ridiculous, uh, isn't it? Oh, I'm not sure about that. I've enjoyed his company these past few days. And I'm beginning to think he's rather dishy. Mmm, tastes good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. There we are. Oh, these look lovely. Oh, that's oh, nice. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 no. Oh. Don't say anything, uh, Alice. It's not worth it. What's wrong now? Donald loves crisps. Not once they're pulverised. Oh. Don't you put a big jar of sweeties on top. Yeah. Hey. Uh. Stop fussing, woman. They'll taste just the same. Children don't want to eat crisps with a spoon. Uh. Uh. Oh, how's the banquet coming along? Well, everything was going just fine until about two minutes ago. Oh, hey, stop it. Oh, grab where you can, man. It's women and children first here. But one minute they're telling you you've got to do it all on your own, and suddenly they're telling you to get out the way. Listen, I've got a piece of news for you. I've just been chatting to Inverdarach, and it's true. He is going to marry Effie McInnes. What? That the man must have caught the rabies. Well, he looked normal enough. So I couldn't get much sense out of him. I even said I'd always fancied Effie myself. <laughs> yeah, he must be mad then. Mind you, Bob, he's shown signs of it before. Remember that time he was thinking about marrying more, eh? Don't worry. Oh. We'll be well off that powdered yes. cliff. Look, look, I'll wait down and get some more. No, no, it's all right, Dougal. There's enough food here. Either. No, 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 I'll wait down and get some more. Look, while the matches, is there anything else you need? What about drinking straws? We haven't got any of them, have we? No, no, no we haven't. Well, if you're going down, then Dougal, see if Isabel's got any of these paper cups and plates. Right, I'll do it right away. You're very organised and efficient all of a sudden. 
Look, if the boy's going to have a party, it's going to be one to remember. Well, just chalk this one up to experience, Dougal. When Donald's birthday comes around again next year, at least you'll know the ropes. I might be in jail by next year. This will be the best party that Glendalough's ever seen. Don't you fret, Dougal. And I'll give you a lift down to the shop. Thanks, Bob. And thank you, Alice, for everything. <laughs> Staying in tonight, are we? Would it make any difference if I did? Ask a silly question. Well, it is, isn't it? If I'm in, you're out. And when we're here together, you spend all evening talking to Frank. <laughs> what was it last night? Oh, yes, derelict mills. Look, you spend your whole day talking local history, Brian. You and your lady editor. With very good... Yes? Oh, I haven't come to buy anything, missus. I've come to put you straight about a couple of facts. This is a general store, Mr. Smith. The Cunningham's lawyer has some daft notion that we've had poachers up at the letter Fallock, and it seems he got the notion from you. Yes. Peter Craig said you and he had come across some poachers. That's right. I was here at the time myself, Snan. Do you not know when you're getting your leg pulled? That was just a couple of tramps. Craig made out there were desperados for a laugh. So you can stop putting it about that there were poachers. Hey, just a minute, just a minute. Craig changes his story. We have to follow suit. But that's all it was, just a story. You really have got it in for Dougal, haven't you? All the way to jail. I hope that isn't an accusation, Blair. Mind you, if it is, it doesn't carry much weight coming from you. Just what do you mean by that? Oh, nothing slanderous, missus. After all, your husband's criminal record is public knowledge. And I suppose you've heard about this woman he's running about with. Who happens to be a professional journalist in need of a local guide. You have a very trusting wife, Blair. Mind you, I hear you're not such a bad guide yourself, eh? What's sauce for the gander? 